My name is Barbara Gordon, and I am a private practice dietitian working in Boise, Idaho. Last semester, I had the opportunity to teach two courses at the University of Idaho, and today I'd like to share three very easy strategies used by the faculty of the Coordinated Program in Dietetics to introduce students to the Academy's Evidence Analysis Library. Here are the, the, the disclosures for the team who put together this presentation. Looking at the employee section, you'll see that I'm an adjunct instructor. Dr. Safahi Waite and Dr. Brown are both full-time members of the faculty. We also reached out to one of the dietetic students for her input on this presentation. This is a snapshot of the University of Idaho's coordinated program in dietetics. It's a four-year program, and it includes about 1,300 hours of supervised practice. The graduates are eligible to sit for the RDN exam. The program has both undergraduate and graduate students. The graduate students are incorporated during year three of the program. And also the students are geographically dispersed. Some of them are at the main University of Idaho campus, which is in Moscow, Idaho, while others are at satellite campuses in Boise or Coeur d'Alene. So we use virtual classroom technology for teaching and collaboration. So our concept was to figure out how to introduce the CPD students to the evidence analysis library by incorporating it into three core courses. So let's just take a minute here and review some of the relevant program goals and program requirements that um, serve the basis of our goal. Two program goals of note are to instill in students the importance of embracing evidence-based practice guidelines, and also to introduce them to academy tools that offer evidence-based guidelines for medical nutrition therapy. One of the program requirements is that all of the students must become a member of the academy. And so within that requirement, we encourage them to access member benefits, such as the evidence analysis library. So our first example um, comes from Dr. Brown's Introduction to Clinical Dietetics class. This is taught in year three of the program. It includes both undergraduate and graduate students. And the course focuses on nutrition assessment, the nutrition care process, and nutrition therapy for 11 common diseases and disorders. The relevant course objectives include the students being able to differentiate between good and poor interviewing and counseling skills. Plus, they're expected to become fluent about the etiology and the risk factors, treatments, and nutrition interventions for the diseases covered in the class. The table on the slide maps the 11 diseases covered in the course with the disease-specific information available in the evidence analysis library. And as you can see, nine out of the 11 conditions are covered to some degree in the library. So in this class, the evidence analysis library was used for a nutrition intervention exercise. The students were tasked with finding an evidence-based intervention for a senior patient with unintended weight loss and describing how it would be implemented via the nutrition care process. After prior to prioritizing the nutrition diagnoses, they were to consult evidence-based resources. We chose this example because there is a comprehensive discussion in the evidence analysis library on the topic. It thus provided students with a structured approach to planning and implementing an evidence-based nutrition intervention. So our second example comes from the medical nutrition therapy course, which students take during year four. In this course, they learn a theoretical and a practical basis for modifying diets on an array of health conditions. 
the relevant objectives include the ability of students to identify evidence-based nutrition interventions. In addition, they are expected to glean from the literature current issues relating to medical nutrition therapy. So the case studies are used to help students learn to design nutrition care plans. The table on this slide maps the topics covered in the case study textbook to topics covered in the evidence analysis library. We use the Nelms and Roth textbooks. So of the 34 case studies included in that book, 27 were either part of the evidence analysis library project or touched on in an evidence summary. So incorporation of the library into this class was quite easy. In the medical nutrition therapy course, we focus on seven case studies. And of those, five were covered in the evidence analysis library. The two topics not covered included acute pancreatitis and traumatic brain injury. Each case study provided admitting history, physical exam findings, and lab data for the patient. And there was also documentation with MD orders, the nursing assessment, and notes from other healthcare providers. At the end of each case studies is a series of exercises, and these are designed to help students dissect the patient record and prepare their nutrition intervention. Students worked on the case studies either independently or in small groups, and among other resources, they were encouraged to refer to the evidence analysis library for helping to formulate their responses to the exercises at the end of each case study. And this is our last example, which comes from the Clinical One Simulation course. This class provides students with hands-on experience of the nutrition care process via a series of scenarios with simulated patients. By the end of the class, the students are prepared to begin their clinical rotations. In this course, to help remind students of the resources available, in both the evidence analysis library and the nutrition care manual, a scavenger hunt activity was done. The goal was to reacquaint them to both the organizational layout and the types of information that was available in these resources. And we designed the questions such that they were specific to the diseases that were co covered in the upcoming simulations. Also, uh, as part of the course, each student was required to perform a nutrition education session. So one of the scavenger hunt questions focused on that topic. The scavenger hunt was 14 questions. Uh, we had posted it on the course Blackboard site ahead of time so students could download it during the class. Each student completed it independently, and then as a class, we reviewed the responses. This interactive discussion offered another opportunity to address any general questions about the evidence analysis library, so it was um, a really fruitful time. Those were our three examples, and as you could see, um, they're, they're really quite easy to implement. Uh, in, we did, however, pick up on some challenges, and in preparing the slide on challenges, I combined both faculty and student perspectives. The first challenge was how and when to incorporate evidence that is graded fair, limited, and expert opinion into clinical practice. So the students really needed help with these decisions, and if you think about it, we rely on our clinical expertise in interpreting evidence of limited quality, and the students haven't yet acquired that clinical experience. But on the flip side, those types of conversations about evidence that's weakly supported by studies was really some uh, great fodder for classroom discussions. 
Another challenge was that some of the students found the requirement to join the academy to be a financial burden. And without membership, they were not able to access the entire Evidence Academy library. And lastly, there was not strong and consistent accountability for students regarding their usage of the evidence analysis library. Thus, at times, students preferred to refer to other web-based resources. Um, one simple solution for this challenge is just to make it a requirement that the evidence analysis library be used as a source. All of these examples offered the opportunity for CPD students to explore the evidence analysis library. For most of the students, the nutrition intervention exercise was their first foray into the library. It helped them to gain an appreciation for how the evidence analysis library complements the nutrition care process. And it, because it was a requirement, students accessed it. And that was true also for the scavenger hunt. Because it was a requirement to use the evidence analysis library, students accessed it. The other thing that was uh, beneficial in terms of the scavenger hunt was that it was very directive. It instructed students to find a specific piece of information. And this added structure was helpful to the students and also making the questions relevant to the course content was very motivating. For the case studies, since access to the library was optional, only a portion of the students elected to use it. So they'd been introduced to the evidence analysis library the year before, a lack of familiarity with the resource and how it might help them to develop assessments and interventions was a contributing factor to why they elected not to use it. So some things um, that we learned was that scheduling that scavenger hunt before the case study exercise might have encouraged more students to use the evidence analysis library as a resource for the case studies. And making the time for a quick web demo of the library may have helped provide the additional guidance needed. And that's a very good segue into uh, our final slide about the lessons learned. So in compiling this presentation, we really thought about what did we learn from these three examples? How can we do this better in the future? We concluded that the structure of the coordinating program was conducive to introducing the evidence analysis library to future dietitians. And as our examples demonstrated, it can be done with relatively nominal effort on behalf of the instructor. For optimal success, budgeting time for an online tour of the library is highly recommended. During year three and four of the dietetics curriculum, there's opportunities to encourage use of the research. Um, and making it a requirement is recommended because we found that if it was optional, students were less apt to use it. And also, this um, made us recognize that there really are opportunities to introduce the evidence analysis library earlier in the program. For example, for youth in developing research papers. In conclusion, exposure to the evidence analysis library throughout the four years of the dietetics curriculum can help encourage usage of this resource. 